history time. So take out your history books, our American heritage. And we talked all last week about who? Yes, Christopher Columbus. And we talked about his um, curiosity as a child, wanting to know all about sailing and all about what the sailors did and so many things that he was curious and wanting to know about. Then we talked about the fact that as he got older, he really became interested in finding a route where? Where did he want to find a sea route to? A route to the Indies, very good, because going across the land was getting to be very dangerous. It was a long trip, first of all, and then they had to go through several countries, and many times those countries would rob them. So it was just a tough thing for Columbus, and, or for any of the people that were in Europe, to get to those places that had gold, silks, pearls, spices, all the things that they were hoping to find. So Columbus thought, let's find a route to the Indies on the water. Most of the sailors decided if we go east around Africa, we should be able to get there, which was true, remember we said, when we had Addie's wonderful globe that she and her parents are letting us borrow, so thank you so much for that. But then we said, Columbus said, no, 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 if we go west, eventually we'll come to the east. We just have to keep going west and going west and going west. Remember, back then they had no idea that there were other continents that would be in the way. So he was right, but when he ran into land and thought he was in the Indies, then he realized that, well, he thought, okay, I'm gonna name these people Indians. Um, I'm looking for gold and he couldn't find it. But the things that he did find, he did bring back with him to who were the king and queen? King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella. So that went back to the king and queen of Spain because they sent Columbus on the three ships. What were they? Nina, Pinta, and the Santa Maria. Very good. And they sent those three ships over to the New World. It wasn't the Indies, but it was a New World that um, that Columbus was able to find. And we said, remember, it was the islands by the continent of North America, not North America itself. So it was um, near where Cuba is, and they named that that um, country for Spain, San Salvador. So. On page 16, we never, I don't think we ever got to our comprehension check. So I want to do our comprehension check on page 16. True or false is all you're going to write in the blank. Christopher Columbus found the Indies. True or false? Well, what did we just say? Yes, that is false. He did not find the Indies. So put false, spell it all out, yes, because I want you to practice spelling because on quizzes and tests, you're gonna to have to write it out as well and you need to make sure you spell it correctly. Number two, Columbus landed on the island of San Salvador on October 12th, 1492. True or false? Good, I heard some of you say it. Don't wait, you guys should know this one. Is that true or false? Good, that's better, most of you, Got it, it is true, that is true. Number three, Columbus's men hoped to find great riches. That also was very true, remember that was their big thing and they got upset when they couldn't find some of the riches, which is why they ended up um, you know, stealing and taking some of the people and keeping them captive. Number four, the people of Spain were pleased with Columbus's discoveries. That one, some of you got, some of you know. That one, remember, is false. Remember, they wanted more things. They wanted that gold, they wanted those pearls, but they didn't realize that Columbus was not near the Indies. Then, Christopher Columbus named the natives Indians because he thought he was near the Indies. That is also true. So it's false, true, true, false, true. Now. The bottom says, explain why the false answers are incorrect statements. So what would make number one true? Christopher Columbus found the what? If not the Indies, what did he find? Yes, we would say he found the new world. Good. And then number four, the people of Spain were not 
we said pleased with Columbus's discovery, so it wasn't pleased, it was what? Not happy, or we could say displeased. They were not pleased with Columbus's discoveries. And so that's the answer for those two that if we had to change it, that's what we would change it to. All right, so now that we've talked about Christopher Columbus and his bravery going across the ocean after he decided to sail and be the first one to sail, now other sailors are, are feeling more comfortable. They're also gaining courage. The King of England sent a group of people uh, from England over to the New World and John Smith became a great friend as well as a great leader to the colonists in a place called Jamestown that we're gonna find out about as we read about John Smith. So page 17, page 17 in your history books. And you can see the artist idea of what John Smith may have looked like. He was born in 1580 and he died in 1631. And you can look at the timeline at the bottom of the page. You see where Columbus was way in the 1400s, 1492. Columbus sailed the ocean blue, discovered the new world. And then 1580 is when John Smith was born. So at the end of the 1500s, um, almost a hundred years after Columbus found um, the New World, and then he died in 1631. Men hope to find riches in the New World. So read along with me in your books, okay? Over 100 years had passed since Christopher Columbus discovered the New World. People still hoped that his dream of finding a better way to the Indies would come true. Somewhere around the New World, some thought, there must be a South Sea Passage to the East Indies. Others thought, if the New World is near the East Indies, then it too must be rich in, in gold and pearls. So remember, they had no idea that there was an American continent, a South, a North America, South America, and then they still had to travel around another huge ocean in order to get to the Indies. But they just figured this has got to be close by, and if it is, then it has to have gold and pearls and silks and spices. Because people thought the islands that Columbus discovered were near the East Indies, they called that New World the West Indies. Of course, the New World was not even anywhere near India, but was instead the continents of North and South America. Only parts of these continents would have some gold and just a few pearls. But the people who lived in 1600 had yet to discover these things for themselves. In 1606, 1606, King James I of England became interested in starting an English colony in the New World. So by that time, 1606, Columbus had already um, gone over and claimed um, the uh, San Salvador for Spain. And the King of England thought, oh, I want, I want land in the new world and, and I want somebody to claim land for me as well. So he started becoming interested in an English colony in the new world. Spain and France had already begun colonies there. These colonies had made their kings rich and he's thinking, I want to be rich too. Why should he let the King of England, why should the King of England, excuse me, let Spain and France have all the riches of the new world? Why shouldn't I have some as well? So now, English ships sail for the New World. Now, we can't get these ships mixed up with Columbus's ships, okay? In December of 1606, three small English ships began their journey to the New World. The Susan Constant, the Godspeed, and the Discovery. Okay, can you say those? The Susan Constant, the Godspeed, and the Discovery. Those were the three English ships. Not like the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria. The, the Susan Constant, the Godspeed, and the Discovery were the three English ships, okay? And they began sailing toward a place known as Virginia. And we know Virginia, it's not too far south from where we are. So that's where they started sailing. So important words at the bottom of 18, page 18. A colony is just a group of people ruled by their own country who settle in another land or a settlement. Then gentlemen, those were the Englishmen that were from wealthy families. Colonist is a person who has settled in a colony. Malaria, 
it was a terrible disease that was carried by mosquitoes. And we'll find out why that's important to know. Then starving time is the terrible winter when many colonists starved. Important names, King James I, we just talked about. He was the king of England and he wanted to form a colony in America. Powhatan, some of you may know that name. He was the chief leader of many Indian tribes surrounding Jamestown and the father of Pocahontas. And we know that name for sure. Pocahontas is the Indian princess who is said to have saved John Smith's life and helped to save the Jamestown colony. On board those three ships were a total of about 100 adventurers. The Susan Constant Godspeed and Discovery, remember? There were about 100 adventurers on those ships who hoped to find great riches in gold. Nearly 50 of these men were known as gentlemen. So about half of the men were called gentlemen. But gentlemen were called gentlemen if they came from very rich families. Gentlemen were men from wealthy families. Because of their wealth, they could afford to have servants do most of their work for them. They didn't have to do it themselves. The New World was a place for hard-working men, not people who weren't used to, to working hard and having people that were used to having things done for them. They're not going to do well over there. These gentlemen, they probably had people to put on my shirt, please. Thank you. Mm, button. Thank you. Okay, put on my shoes. Ouch, ouch, put them on gentle, look gentle. Okay, can you tie them? Thank you. Oh, can you do my hair? You know, these men had not had to do anything because they had servants to do it for them. But they're coming over to America where there's no houses, there's no shops, there's, there's nothing. And they had to work hard. Are they gonna be able to be okay there? This was a place for hardworking men. There were trees to be chopped. These men didn't even put on their own clothes. Are they gonna be able to hold an ax and chop trees? There were houses that needed to be built. If the men wanted food, you gotta kill, you hunt the animals. And then you've gotta plant gardens. Were they going to be able to do those things? Ugh, I'm not touching that, that's bloody. I'm, oh dear, that's dirt. I don't put my hands in dirt. I, no, thank you. Um, can somebody else get me some food? Their servants weren't there with them. They were going to have to figure it out on their own. Why then did these gentlemen come to America, a place where they're gonna have to work hard? Well, they had heard that America was a land of great wealth. They imagined themselves just strolling along the shores and picking up gold nuggets by the bagful and bringing those gold nuggets with them so they could spend them on whatever they wanted. For these wealthy adventurers, America was the place to find even greater wealth. That was what they expected. They weren't thinking, I've got to find a place to stay. I've got to find food. I've got to make sure that I have a place for water. They just imagined that they were going to just walk along the beach. Oh, I found some more gold. Oh, look, another piece of gold. Oh, oh, my bag is so full. This is wonderful. I love America. That's what they thought. They weren't really thinking it through. All right, so really quickly, important places at the bottom of page 19. East Indies, that's India and part of Asia, and you can see the picture there on the map. West Indies, those were the islands that Columbus discovered. And then the New World, that's both North and South America. Um, those were the American continents. And then Jamestown was the first successful English settlement in the New World in Virginia. So you can look at where Jamestown is in con um, conjunction with everything else that we've been talking about. Um, so the King's Orders. Captain Newport, who was captain of the Susan Constant, was in charge of all three ships. So Captain Newport, he was in charge of the three ships. Just before he sailed, the King's messenger gave him a small sealed wooden box. The king gave orders that the box was to be opened the first night after landing in Virginia. As the three ships traveled, the time went slowly. Weeks 
turned into months. Remember we talked about the same thing with Columbus. Being tossed about by waves in a small ship was not fun. Uh-oh, an argument. One day, Captain Newport heard loud arguing aboard the Susan Constant. He hurried to see what the trouble was. In the center of the ring of angry men, there was a bunch of angry men, and they're all standing around going, rawr, rawr, in a big circle. But in the center of that circle was an even angrier man named John Smith. He was a soldier, and he had red hair and a fiery temper. So he's in the middle going, no, you, no, you, no, you, no, you, no, you. And he's going after all the men that are coming at him. When the men saw Captain Newport, they accused John Smith of trying to cause trouble. It's him. He's causing trouble. We need to do something about him. Even though John Smith said it was not true, Captain Newport ordered him to be taken below deck and put in chains. Get him below the deck put him in chains, and we're done with him. The men did not like him, and Captain Newport tried to keep them happy, so he put John Smith in chains. Virginia at last. January, February, and March passed slowly aboard the three small ships. On April 27, 1607, the cry of land, land was heard. That night, all the passengers gathered around Captain Newport. All but one, guess who? Not John Smith, because guess where he was? Down in the ship, in the bottom, in chains, below the deck. Captain Newport was holding something very, very important. It was the sealed wooden box that contained King James I's instructions for the new colony. So this box was telling who was gonna be in charge, what they were supposed to do, what the rules were. Every man listened carefully as Captain Newport read seven names. They were the names of the people who were going to be the leaders of the colony. Captain Newport read his name first. Captain Newport, that's me. I'm one of the leaders of the colony. And one by one, he read the rest of the names. He read a second name and a third name and a fourth name, fifth name and a sixth name. And then before he read the last name on the list, he paused. Because guess whose name was the last name on that list. Oh, you guys are too smart. Yes, John Smith was the last name. That means he can't be below deck. He has to be one of the leaders. And these men didn't even like him. But King James I said, he is one of my seven leaders of the new colony in the new world. What are they going to do? Are they going to let him be a leader? Or are they going to keep him down below the deck in chains because they don't like him and they're mad at him? Guess what? You're going to have to come back tomorrow to find out. Sorry. Don't read ahead. If you read ahead, I will be really, 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 really sad with you. Don't read ahead. Wait until tomorrow and we'll find out what happens tomorrow. All right, guys. I hope that you enjoyed learning a little bit about John Smith. And we'll continue with him tomorrow. See ya.